strains to get to that one that's lost. You may like me, but well, it comes from hell. All the way down to earth. Come, come through a, 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 a virgin birth. Born flesh just like you and I. So that we can be born of the Spirit into the body of Christ. And boy, I'm thankful for that tonight. I'm thankful for no hand. There's a story I want to share with you. And I, I'll try to be as brief as I can. Try to put this book where I can catch a light there. Without a shadow. That helps some. In the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Mark chapter number 5. Now I'm going to have to read, oh, I don't know, uh, 15, 16 verses maybe. I try not to read this in the message. I really feel it's important to me. I want to, I want to go back and emphasize on this, on these scriptures tonight. But in Mark chapter number 5, in verse number 1, speaking of Jesus and his disciples, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been all bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And all this mountain day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee. By God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of this land, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there now unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. And they defended the swine, fled, and told in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus, seeing him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting and clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. Now, the Lord prior to this trip across the sea here, uh, he's talking about the Sea of Galilee, prior to this, the Lord uh, had, and while on this journey, the Lord had uh, boarded the ship and a great storm had come up. And we see that the storm was so great that the disciples even were afraid. They, matter of fact, they went down into the ship and they found Jesus. And they said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? And of course we know the story how that Jesus went up and he spoke to the elements there, to the sea and to the wind. And the Bible said there was a great calm. Uh, and now we see Jesus as he has crossed the Sea of Galilee, and he goes into a, an area here uh, 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 of a land of uh, both the Galileans here. And there was a man here. Now this shows you the extremes that the Lord would go to to get to somebody to save them from sin. Now, you see, the Lord, he, he, uh, uh, he will travel in 
so where does Paul say, well, no, folks in the Bible are saved in strange places. I guess last concern that sycamore tree was kind of a strange place to get saved, huh? Wouldn't you say? Uh, and I thought about this, this land here in the tombs, what, what a strange place for a person to meet God. I said, well, I know, I'll give you an opportunity, tell me how you met the Lord. Now, some of you may have met him on a hillside near a cemetery or something like that. But this man, he, he was, uh, he was dwelling there living in the tombs. And you know the story is, I read in your head how that, uh, that Jesus came upon the scene and, and he done a work there and, and, and how did he make the, make the man there with the legion of the, of the, of the devils out in him. But I thought as I jumped to the end of that story there and we see how that he was treated when the men come out and those that saw what happened, they revealed to him what had taken place there in this man's life now that the demons were taken out and how did the, the, uh, the, the uh, swine uh, run into the sea there. You'd think these folks would have been excited that this man was now right. You'd think that they would have been somewhat pleased that a sinner had been saved and this man would no longer be tormented and not along the hillside and the mountain. Like that didn't make sense. But what happened? They saw that their money prophet there. They saw, listen folks, there's something to be said today uh, uh, for, for uh, placing value where value needs to be placed. If I, if I can use that whole term, uh, uh, placing value where it needs to be placed. Uh, but their concern was in their money, was in their swine, and they had driven down the hill into the sea. Now, I'm going to use just a, a simple thought. I thought about this, and I tried to other thoughts and other things to think of, but I'm going to preach on the case, the case of the devil hand, amen? Let go right the case of the devil hand there, amen? Now then, Jesus comes out uh, into the land, and God immediately this man that, that nobody can tame, this man that nobody can find, this man that would cut and afflict himself there. He'd go through the hills and the mountains, and then screaming like a panther there. That scared the people and the little children to death there. He'd come, through the, come down out of the hills all bloody and green, cut himself there there. Uh, that's God. He was a master. But isn't that like you and I? Uh, when God found us, did he find us praising him? Did he find us glorifying him? Where did he find us? He found us deep in sin. Amen. And that's how uh, uh, you know, this man was. He, he was injured down. That's what sin will do. Uh, sin will injure you. It will bind you. He will capture you there. And after a while, he will kill you if you don't get something right with God there. Uh, but notice this man. How, when he saw Jesus, he realized that there was something about this man. And uh, there was something there. Legion, for the word many there, and Jesus said, I command you to come out of 
got an elder brother. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I found out I got an elder brother. You have two brothers. Got an elder brother. Yes. Oh, thank God. Yes. When the enemy comes along and the battle is too great and I can't fight the battle, I call. I say, Jesus! Your family 
heaven that needs to get right with God. Where are our priorities tonight? Are our priorities tied up in the bank account? Are our priorities tied up in the home up? I've seen folks that wait to Wednesday evening to cut their grass around the house. Come on now, say amen. You know what I'm talking about. That is the truth. They'll wait till Sunday morning to wash the car. Bless God. What do you mean, preacher? I'm saying there, if their priorities would have been right, they'd come out there and shout. When they saw that man, they'd realize he'll never run through that street for screaming and scaring the children again. They'd realize he's never going to be fussing and pleasant and fighting with the community again. They'd, you know how to get along with, uh, uh, with somebody that's a rebel out in the community? See him get right with God, and they'll help them down. Swine. Now the Lord placed on the swine there. Now, you say, well, that meant, well, it was their swine. But the Lord gave them the swine to feed there. He gave the swine the grass and things to eat there. The Lord placed those swine there that day. You see, God knew about your situation. A long time ago, you said, for me. You say, what? I hadn't even done anything. <clears throat> God knew you would. God knew you'd need a savior. Yeah. I believe it was Jeremiah the problem. He said, before I was born in my mother's womb, yeah. the Lord knew me yeah. and ordained me to be a prophet. Yeah. Right. I believe the apostle Paul was ordained to be an apostle. Oh, yes. even, even before, even while he's out there persecuting the church, bringing a battle from the church, and then strangely, one day on the way to Damascus, finding Christians along the way, taking back to them, going into jail, just persecuting the church. And just strangely, on the way to Damascus, God stopped him, shined the light out of heaven on him, revealed his son Jesus, and got saved right there in a road. What they say? Got saved in a road. But this man, if their priorities would have been right. But not only were they not excited that this man was now saved, but now. They're so, they're so offended at what Jesus has done, they say, we just need you to leave. Mm -hmm. Depart from our coast. Get out of here. I've said there's a lot of things that folks may do. But the most dangerous thing that anyone will ever do is to reject the calling from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now he calls through the through the working of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, He's the one that comes and visits you. He's the third person that God had. He's the one that comes and visits you, comes at your heart. Says, Will you come? If you just come, please come. You'd have thought they'd been excited, this man was saved. But now they said, We want you to leave. You've done devil out of him up. You've done, you've done spoil the bacon, what you don't know. You've just cost us a whole load of money. I mean, you just messed up. Our economy now is in trouble around. This whole tell us something wrong in America today when we put dollars, dollars over top of souls today. When we put anything over top of souls of lost people. Mm -hmm. Jesus, God valued this. He valued your soul so much that he was willing to part ways with his son. For a period of time, he parted ways with his son so that his son could come from heaven to earth to die in your place, right. to die in my place. Yeah. You think about that. You think about that. He had the devil a hand. So that he could bring this man out of the tombs. So that he could bring this man that was wild, wicked, and wily out of the tomb. To make a new creation out of him. Now since then, that individual's gone on to heaven. But I wonder if somebody tonight, somewhere along in heaven, say, Hey, can you tell us a bit about your conversion? What was it like when you got saved? <laughs> I wonder what his response would be. I think he'd probably just... Maybe wait a little bit and begin to tell them how I was in a tomb, among graves, 
didn't know what to do. Lost my mind. I collected myself. Would just as soon have been dead as the life I said. And he said, now I thought that thought that maybe maybe just stop and just end it all. I tell that all the time. And then he said, but you know something? I saw a ship anchoring close to the shore. And I saw someone get off that ship. And I'd heard about this man called Jesus. Time and time again, I'd heard about how that he could help me. And as soon as I saw this man Jesus, I knew that if I had not help, I'd have to get to him. And I went down where he was. He removed the devil from me. And he enclosed me in himself. And that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm here today. You think about that tonight for just a little bit. The case of the devil hand. He, uh, He done a great work. Yet he was asked to leave. And there's folks today that the Lord has spoken to their hearts. And they said, no, Lord, not now. And I started saying a while ago, the most dangerous thing you'll ever do <clears throat> is if you was to insult the Holy Ghost by saying, no, I don't want it. You know, that's the most dangerous thing a person will ever do. I, had a, I, I, I didn't know him real well, but I knew who he was. If I saw him, I didn't know he recognized him. Young man, a couple grades or so below us in school. I'll say this and then I'll let you appear a song man. But he, uh, he was with a bunch of other boys one evening. And they liked to, they liked to be daring, dare one another. Daring game. Show how brave they were. But afraid of nothing. Challenge me, I'll show you. And when somebody got a hold of a pistol, and they stripped all the shells out of one of them and spin that barrel. And they'd take turns. Foolish click the oh, click it. He could have said no. Yeah. No, no. He could, have, he could have said, no, I believe I'll just go get saved to church down the road. They said, put that pistol up there. Didn't think about it at all. Pull the trigger. He went, not on that. Not on that. What an awful thing to gamble. To gamble eternity. To gamble eternity. I don't know where your hearts this evening. Everybody's heart will maybe right with God. There might be something in your heart you just want to talk to God about. We're going to stand there and we're going to give us a song tonight. And if there's something on your heart tonight, maybe there's priorities in life that you need to stop and take a look at and say, I want to get my priorities straight. Well, it's a good time to do it. The Lord's in the house tonight. Good spirit in the building tonight. Stand with us if you would. And if you need to deal with the Lord, come on. Come on tonight and deal with the Lord. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing touch?
Had them back to the evening service at 6 o'clock. So mark it down and make effort to come to the Lord's house. And we'll have a good time in the Lord. Well, until then, may the Lord bless you. You're very good.